Go. Thanks. Uh, hello, my name is Josh from Google. I'm joined by my colleague Barrett. Barry, we do a sound check. Hello, hello, hello. Perfect. We can hear you. So I'll try to keep this uh, in around 17, 18 minutes, so we can hopefully do a couple questions. But uh, the main thing we're going to be talking about today is the application of pluggable scheduling with respect to Google Search. So Barrett's going to spend uh, time talking about how we implemented a bespoke policy to help improve performance there. And then I'm also going to talk a little bit about how we've been using pluggable scheduling to improve general purpose scheduling. Um, because it's not realistic that we're going to write a custom policy for every user. So before we get there, I just want to super briefly talk about our motivation, because um, we've been working on this for a couple years now. With respect to pluggable scheduling, we had three main goals. The first was we wanted to solve the rollout speed challenge, right? If you want to update policy in the kernel, doing a rollout is really slow. Putting all the updates in user space and BPF, you can push the updates order of magnitude faster. Um, like probably around months for kernel update becomes days or weeks for user space rollouts. Additionally, within the kernel, we're kind of constrained with how the scheduler is designed and that, like for example, the scheduler is built around the idea of per CPU run queues. It's a very natural thing. It kind of started out from unit processor and then it just gets expanded to multiprocessor, but that has certain you know, trade-offs that we want to move away from. Um, Barrett will talk a little bit about how we used per CCX run queues to help improve search. And this is also a follow-up from, you know, Tejin kind of teed us up earlier about soft partitioning and thinking about how do we do uh, more CCX-centric scheduling. And then finally, anybody who's programmed in the scheduler knows we only have, you know, a small number of scheduling classes mostly just CFS, and so any changes you make have to pretty much go into one of those few classes and be generic enough to apply to any scheduler. But with a user space or BPF scheduler, we can make any changes we want. We can make any kind of bespoke policy. And then super briefly, um, we started working on this in 2019 under a project named Ghost, which you may have heard of. We made that open source and published some papers. Um, SCADIXD then came along, and we've been collaborating with Meta on that. Uh, the difference is mostly that SCADIXD is kind of a BPF-first approach into how the hooks are designed, whereas we were kind of a user space first, but then BPF acceleration. And so we're currently working on migrating some of our Ghost APIs to be built on top of SCADIXD, especially now that it appears that SCADIXD will go in, in the next merge window. So with that, uh, let me hand it off to Barrett to talk about search. Hey everybody, everybody. I'm Barrett. Barrett. Next, Next slide, please. Uh, some, some of you may, you may recall this picture. picture. This, this is from uh, LPC a couple years, years ago. But this is the overall picture of how BPF works, works with, with Ghost. Uh, so on the far, far left, left there, you see a bit of a kernel, kernel space. space. We have kernel and our Ghost scheduling class, which is roughly equivalent, equivalent to SCADIXT. Uh, everything in, in, in red, red, I consider the, the, the schedule of the agents. agents. Uh, uh, there's, there's a BPF part of it in the middle that makes the actual scheduling decisions. And it has a couple of little hooks into, into the, the kernel, kernel. Those are right, the BPF, BPF message and BPF, BPF picnic, picnic task, task, which are similar, similar to uh, some things like this, the SCADX stops. stops. Uh, but, but basically, yeah, the kernel, kernel tells us about uh, events, events, and then, and then we, we tell, tell the kernel, kernel what we want to run. To run. Uh, but the bulk, the bulk of the actual, actual logic happens in, in BPF. Yeah, like that's, that's where the, 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 I think, I think of it as the loop of, of uh, the scheduler. scheduler. Um, and then, and then, then we communicate, communicate with uh, user, user space, space via yeah, BPF maps. maps how, how, and we, we have, have a giant BPF map, map for our like, 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 instructions and things, things like that. that. Uh, and then in our user space agents, we originally had user space doing a lot, like telling the kernel exactly what to run and where. Uh, I've kind of removed the model, model of having, having user space, space be responsible, responsible for, for like grammar tweaking, tweaking and monitoring and adjusting things, things but, but not, not under the current path. path. Um, and, and then, then importantly, uh, we, have we have this green, green box, box, which is the application, the application itself. itself. And the application can talk to the yeah, yeah, user, user space. space. And, and we actually give, give the application a file descriptor for, for the BPF map, map so that they can talk directly to our BPF agent. Next slide, please. Uh, let me talk about search a little bit. bit. Uh, search, search is just a gigantic, gigantic application, application, but from a very, very high level. level. We have, we have uh, numerous, numerous groups of threads. threads. Uh, we, have, we have a like query threads. threads. These handle like RPCs of various types. 
and they'll, they'll range in duration from maybe only hundreds of microseconds up to tens of milliseconds or even hundreds of milliseconds for some for some queries. Uh, there's also another class of threads called call them polars. Uh, they're very important, but they're also very noisy. Um, they typically run like an order of ten, tens of microseconds at a time. They'll wake up, move data from one queue to another and go back to sleep. And uh, uh, they're important, but they, as you can see with the 10 microsecond uh, run times, they, they can be uh, very disruptive to other workloads. Um, similarly, there's also just a whole bunch of other things like housekeeping threads. Uh, don't really want to go into it. Uh, the uh, overall, the application is sensitive to cache locality and CCX placement. And of course, you know, latency matters for all these things, especially for the queries. Uh, and finally, we run on multi-socket uh, NUMA machines. Next slide, please. One of the policies we wanted to look into was uh, some form of CPU soft partitioning. So looking at the overall problem, we have lots of CPUs and several thread groups. You know, the very first thing that pops in your head is uh, how about we spatially partition the machine among these groups? Uh, one of the benefits from this is uh, well, cache locality. So my, for instance, my RPCs can all be run on one, one cache and the pullers can be on another one. Um, but the other aspect is that those pullers were very noisy. So this way, if I put them on their own little partition, let's uh, basically minimize their interference on the rest of the machine. Um, one of the things we didn't want to do was use CPU asks. Uh, the affinity is kind of too stiff. Like, for instance, I don't want to say, yes, you have this exact set of CPUs. Um, I just want to give it a little guidance. Uh, so what I would do is say, hey, how about I assign uh, CPUs to a group? And if that group of threads wants it, you'll get it. You'll have dibs on it. Uh, but if you don't want the CPU at the time, somebody else can use it. So this was kind of a little, a little policy that we had had uh, put together. Um, we said, oh, this is a great opportunity to have user space come along and periodically adjust the sizes of those groups. Um, so, so the group assignments were, 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 were basically change them every like 32 milliseconds or something. But in the meantime, uh, even though user space changes the group assignments, from BPF, that's more just a hint of uh, where where threads should be uh, be run. And if you want to run outside your assigned CPUs, well, that's fine. That's just something a little decision a BPF will make on the fly. Uh, next slide, please. Another policy thing we wanted was uh, per CCX run queues, and each CPU is assigned to a specific CCX run queue and a many to one relationship. Uh, th this is a specifically a run queue structure that every CPU pulls from with, so there's a spin lock for it, everyone's grabbing from it. It's it's physically like a regular run queue, except it's just every CPU knows to just pull from it. Uh, the thing is we are going for is getting the high L3 cache locality, uh, but there is a trade-off is that we have uh, less CPU and uh, core slash SMT locality. We also have, a uh, because of this policy, a kind of rapid assignment of threads to CPUs. Like for instance, there's no head of line blocking where if you're hap like, like you would get on a per CPU run queue. For instance, if you're sitting on a per CPU run queue and it just so happens that that CPU is held up by one by one thread, normally you would wait for a while. You'd be waiting on a load balancer of some sort. But if we got a uh, per CCX run queue, then or or any shared run queue, that's will cut down on our scheduling latency. Uh, we actually do have optimizations in place to try to keep threads in their previous CPUs, but for the most part, we don't want to wait around for that. Uh, next slide, please. And then finally, we, we have an application-specific picnics task. And I mentioned earlier that we have different types of threads. So for instance, RPC threads, uh, we actually know what the deadline is from, from user space. And they actually tell us this through that giant array map. Uh, we actually will be using a BPF arena eventually, but for now we're still using a giant array map of for every thread, there's a little struct that the, uh, the application can fill in. Um, and one of the policies we wanted to explore here too was uh, keeping tasks on the CPU until, until they're complete. Um, we, we know that they have a specific task and that they will eventually get off the CPU. Um, so we actually don't have any time slicing built in. Uh, for the pollers, we have a, basically a, a much more simple policy, which is just get on any CPU quickly. We know you're just going to run quickly and block and uh, get get them off. Um, we do have some uh, future work in that spot, but um, but yeah, that's future work. Uh, next slide, please. Finally, how do we put all this stuff together? 
uh, I have this framework I called uh, called Flux, and uh, I mentioned this uh, last year at LPC. But uh, the, the general idea is that we want to express the search policy as a hierarchy of schedulers. Remember, we have numerous CPUs and several thread groups. Well, how about you know each thread group is its own scheduler, and by scheduler I mean like struct uh, a struct scheduler with code and everything like that. Uh, and Flux itself is a framework that I put together that lets you write hierarchical schedulers and for composing these multiple scheduling policies all into the same overall scheduler. And so and at the top of the hierarchy, you think of having a scheduler of, of subschedulers, and that's the thing that does soft partitioning of CPUs to groups of threads. And that's kind of the leaf in the bottom of the hierarchy is kind of what you think of as a typical thread scheduler assigning threads to groups sorry, assigning us threads to CPUs. And that's where your group or application specific policy comes in. Uh, next slide, please. Here's a little picture of what we have. At the very top level, we have this thing I call dibs. It's just a, a block of code. It's a subscheduler that assigns CPUs to other subschedulers. Remember, subschedulers are basically groups of threads, or you could even think of them as C groups. And its policy is one of soft partitioning the CPU. And it'll do something like, hey, let me set number of CPUs based on a child's load and attempt to pack you into a CCX. Uh, and it'll have two children. As gets, they're both subschedulers, one for RPC and one for Polar. The Polar one has that very basic policy, global FIFO queue, just runs, uh, just run, run whatever task is next on a, on a CPU as it becomes available. Uh, the RPC one is a little bit more complex. Uh, that's the one that actually is much bigger. It takes up more of the machine. So that one has the per CCX run queues. Uh, it too schedules threads on the CPUs, but it uses an EDF policy. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, people always like to hear about the results. Uh, I always throw out the big caveats on this, that this is a single node benchmark and it's testing data, but compared to CFS with these, this policy, we have 10% uh, more QPS and uh, lower uh, lower latencies, both at the P50 and all the way at the P99. And next slide, please. Yeah, but at this point, I'll pass it over to Josh. We'll talk more about uh, general purpose scheduling. Thanks. Yeah, I think so. This is oh, there, you there you go. It's on that now. Okay, I will just use this. Um, yes, and so once we write such a policy, we're going to have a mixture of user-specific bespoke policies and a general purpose policy. Can we layer these things together on a single machine? And then furthermore, and I think this is an even more important question, can any of the things we learn about be applied back to kernel CFS? So the main thing I want to call out, and our main observation, about uh, general purpose scheduling and our experimentation is we observe that the kernel scheduler really cares about threads rather than groups of threads, right? C groups as an entity is a compile time option, which means that the scheduler has to support everything as a thread in terms of the schedulable unit. And this works somewhat well, but it has um, some important downsides. There's no real way for the scheduler to try to keep a group of threads constrained within a particular group of cores other than giving a single hard affinity, which is not something you want to do. Um, what you really want to do is schedule a group of threads onto a group of CPUs. Keep the C group as the fundamental abstraction that the scheduler is operating on. If you look at how CFS load balances, for example, it just iterates you know, a list of threads on the CPU and starts spraying them out to remote CPUs. There's no ability for it to try to keep threads together from a particular application. And there's all kinds of reasons why you'd want to do that. For example, maybe you want to keep your application mostly concentrated on a CCX, but still allow it to spill out to some remote cores if it has to burst. Um, you know, this is chiplet scheduling and getting the performance here is super important, as you just saw with Barrett's presentation. Um, so I'd say this is our biggest observation in terms of general purpose scheduling in the kernel versus what we've been able to do. There's also a couple other things I've been looking at, namely uh, mixing real-time latency bounds with fair type properties. We also see you know, with EEVDF, there's movements there in the kernel. And then the last big thing to call out is a lot of the tuning knobs that we see in CFS are kind of treated as debug knobs. I mean, they were literally moved to debug FS. But we applied some ML tuning to try to optimize these for different applications and predict the right 
values, and we're actually able to extract several additional QPS from the same machine, same hardware, just changing these you know, three or four different debug FS knobs that the scheduler exposes, which kind of implies that there's actually a lot of headroom to add even more knobs and more heuristics. And so we're adding new ways to tuning the scheduler, and we think that this is something we can apply back to CFS because it's clear that these are not just, you know, set to a power of five and then be done with it. These are things we should actually be adding more of and trying to tune better. Um, I think uh, we're almost out of time. I will leave this up, but I won't talk through the whole thing, but this is kind of building off of Barrett's earlier call out of how we can layer policy on a machine. Um, you can have different jobs with different types of policies all exist within a single set of cores, and you have a hierarchy of schedulers that delegates cores up and down. And then at the tail, you have the thing that's actually driving the scheduling policy, whether that be like a FIFO policy or a throughput optimized policy, or whatever it happens to be. So yeah, the main theme is BYP, bring your own policy. We can have any user at Google write their own custom policy and layer these things together seamlessly into a single framework that we call Flux. And with that, I think there's maybe like a minute or two for questions. We will take we will take one question and um, and also I, I uh, let me remind to the next speakers to the people who give presentation later that the 20 minutes also include the question and answering. Okay, it's fine, fine. Thank you for the presentation, Josh. And now Gautam, uh, and then we move to the next speaker. Okay. So, uh, Josh, thanks for the nice presentation. Uh, in terms of in terms of what we could carry from uh, your experiments back to the BPF scheduler, is a per CC? Can can we move the run queues from you know individual CPUs to a per CCX level? Is that something that we can explore as well? Because it seems like it's working out pretty well uh, in in the RPC case that you mentioned. So, yeah, you mean in the kernel, right? Move yes. The, yes. Yeah, that's tricky because so much is based around the idea of per CPU run queues and per CPU RQ locking and everything. Probably the closest we came to that was with uh, uh, CoreSCED, where we kind of made both SMT siblings somewhat share the, the same RQ lock and maybe a common grouping of threads. But I don't think it's going to be an easy lift to make you know <laughs> any larger granularity uh, run queue type things. And per CCX is just one example, right? Like we've also experimented with per NUMA run queues. Depending on what you're trying to schedule, if you're trying to schedule you know, a million threads, maybe that's not the right abstraction because there's going to be way too much contention on that single run queue. But if you're scheduling, say, VMs, where you're only scheduling a finite number of vCPUs, maybe the trade-off makes sense to make the granularity larger because there's going to be a lot less pressure on that single run queue source. So that's where it gets down to it's very application specific what the right trade-off is. Thanks.